Trojan family, Trojan family, what's up, what's up, we here, what's up, what's the word, man, how's everybody doing, man, I hope everybody's having a good Friday, look, man, I just want to hop right into this thing, we got a couple of little items that we need to address, and uh, wow, uh, some of the articles that I've seen, first, like, share, subscribe, USCJ32 on Instagram, like, share, subscribe, USCJ32 on Instagram, check this out, the Heisman odds came out, I want to talk about that. I want to get it in that. I want to get specifically to those who are on that list. Wow, it kind of blew my mind, man. We're going to go over that list, but before we do that, let's get into a couple of news and note items, man. The first one is this. It's uh, Boston College receivers, man. Uh, his name is Flowers. Turned down, listen to this, turns down a 600 k offer from one school, then he turns down a 300 k offer from another school. Like, dude, what is it getting to the point? When can we come to a point to where, like, every athlete's not going to be a Jordan Addison? Every athlete is not a Caleb Williams. Everybody's not going to get that, that big-time deal. I don't even think that guy's as good as uh, Mario Williams. Now, this guy, Flowers, he turns down this, this big NIL deal, 600K from one school and 300 from another school, and they said he went in the portal. What are you looking for? Like, like, what, what do you think you're going to get? I, I haven't even heard his name surface. I, I mean, I mean, nowhere. I haven't really heard his name a whole lot in, in, in this whole portal uh, portal deal. So listen, like, share, subscribe. USCJ32. That's one deal. But here, here, here's the whopper right here. Here's the whopper with cheese, lettuce, and onions, and tomatoes, and all kind of other stuff. Because this one right here is going. This, this is this is mind boggling. It's mind blowing. How about this? Here it is right here. The SEC, Pac-12 commissioners, they're coming together to meet with members to discuss NIL legislation. The SEC and the Pac-12 are coming together to meet in, uh, with Congress for the NIL um, um, legislation. When in the world have the Pac-12 and when has the SEC ever really just agreed on anything? Or I mean, wh why are we... Why are we getting hoodwinked to get locked in with the SEC? Why do we care about what the SEC thinks? Why do we have to try? I want to read this to you, though, before we get into these Heisman odds. I want to read this to you because this, you would think the Pac-12 commissioner would have more sense to be able to say, look, this NIL thing is going to benefit some of our schools, some of our brand schools, some of our you know blue blood schools like USC. So why are you going to try to side with them to try to put a hold on this thing at least let this thing go for one year. Now, I do think it needs to be regulations, right? We all know that it needs to be regulations. But why are you siding with the SEC? Because their motives is not the same as your motives. Their motives is totally different. Their motives is, is, is listen, the SEC is trying to put a lock on this thing. So, so school, other schools that have real brands such as Texas, such as Texas A&M, you know, such as, such as USC, all these other schools that are not, on, have everything on lock like Obama. They're trying to put a lockdown on this thing. So listen to this. Listen to this. This is this is from the SEC president. Uh, let's see it here. Let's see it here. It says it says it here. It says, I appreciate today the opportunity for Congress in dialogue with members of Congress. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey said in a statement Thursday night, as we have observed activity emerge, it is very difficult. It's very different. For original ideas around name, image, and likeness, it's important to continue to pursue a national NIL structure to support the thousands of opportunity made available for young people through intercollegiate athletics programs across the country. The parties also discuss the very serious negative implications for college athletes should they become classified as employees, uh, Pac-12 president says. Man, listen, man. Do you really think, do you really think the SEC is concerned about this name, image, and likeness thing? I don't think so. Because for years, like we said, and we're going to talk about this Heisman thing, for years, as we said, it, it's, been, it's, been, it's been secret handshakes. And I told you and my guys in my video, a, a couple videos a while back, and it was, a, you know, the article with Fred Taylor, ex-NFL running back that played for Florida, End up going to Georgia, uh, well, end up going to Georgia, uh, Florida, but got fifty thousand dollars from Georgia, but end up going to, to Florida anyway. This stuff has been going on. So you telling me, you telling me now you really care? 
Now you really care about where the, the, the way the money's being distributed. Now you really care about the way the money is being issued out. Man, come on, man. And for the Pac-12 commissioner to follow, you know, to get in size with this guy, man. You, I mean, you the one that's going to be losing, man. You the one that's going to be losing out. It's not going to be the SEC commissioner is going to be gaining on this. And so now he, the SEC commissioner says this. I appreciate the opportunity for Congress and dialogue with members of Congress. SEC commissioner Greg Sankey said. Thursday night, as we observe activities emerge that is very different from the original ideas of name, image, and likeness. I'm not saying that we don't need, I'm not saying that we don't need regulations, but I, what I will say is this. I will say that with, with them two meeting together and coming together, the SEC and the Pac-12 commissioner, what I'm saying is this. It's not going gonna, gonna to benefit one more than the other. I can guarantee you that. Like, share, subscribe, USCJ32 uh, on Instagram. And let me tell you this. Jordan Addison, you better hurry up, buddy. Jordan Addison, you better hurry up and decide now. Because once this legislation goes into place, you, you, hey, you, your opportunity to receive money, it's over. I'm done with that. Like, share, subscribe, USCJ32 on Instagram. You can get the most, the most money you can right now. So go ahead and sign. Uh, listen, so listen, this is the Heisman odds. I need you guys to tell me in the comment section, do you agree with the Heisman odds? I'm going to go through this list real quick. We're going to talk about this list, but I'm going to ask you a, particular, a couple of questions. What do you notice about this list? What do you notice about this list that's just kind of absolutely crazy? I noticed like several things, but let's get into it. Here's the Heisman odds. They just came out. The number one Heisman, they got C.J. Stroud, plus 22. I'm sorry, plus 200, Ohio State. Second is going to be Bryce Young. He was the Heisman Trophy winner from last year. He's plus 400. That's going to be Bama. Third, we're going to have our one and only. We're going to have Caleb Williams, plus 1,200 SC. Fourth, we're going to have DJ from uh, Clemson, plus 3,000. And, uh, and then five, we're going to have uh, Tyler Van Dyke, Miami, plus 3,000. Whatever happened to Jay Garcia from, Cal from California that moved from California to Georgia that was supposed to be going to SC that was committed to us, then he, then he ended up committing to Miami. I guess he lost in the sauce, huh? But anyway, that's a whole other story. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke, Miami, plus 3,000. Jackson Dart, Ole Miss, plus 3,000. Then we have Quinn Ewers, plus 4,000, University of Texas. Then, five, uh, then we're going to have uh, Keenan Slovis, plus 4,000, Pitt. Then we're going to have Dylan Gabriel, plus 4,000, Oklahoma. Now, this is the question I have. I'm starting to think these guys that these outlet these major outlets. I'm really beginning to think that these guys are really just you know, and I I know that they're biased, given the, whatever region they're reporting from or whatever whatever outlet they're reporting from, whether it be you know a, a, a down south or whatever the case may be. I know that they are, but listen, bro, Jackson Dart. I mean, he's in a battle right now. Why are you putting him in the high, high uh, 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 the uh, Heisman favorites? Does he have the potential? Absolutely. He's a, great, he's a great athlete. He has great potential. But you're putting him in the Heisman odds right now, and that guy, man, I, I, you know, listening to some of the reports coming out of the old Miss Spring, um, that guy is, is battling Jackson Dart right now, man. And Jackson Dart struggled in his first in his spring game. So why are you guys putting him? That's number one. Why are you putting him up there that, I mean, already like he's already won the job? I mean, you're just going to give the guy the job already, huh? And I'm not nothing against Jack, Jackson Dart because I think he's a heck of an athlete, and I, I love Jackson Dart. But then so the other thing I noticed is you tell me in the comment section what do you think? This is premature. What do you think? Like, share, uh, share subscribe. USCJ32 on Instagram. The other thing I know, Quentin Ewers. Now this guy was at Ohio State. They he was at Ohio State, couldn't win the job over there for, with CJ Stroud. So now you bring him over to Texas. Now he's a Heisman favorite, but he's battling. He's battling as well. I seen him in his spring game. I mean, he had maybe a couple nice throws, but he wasn't all that impressive. So you just want to give him the job as well. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm just I don't understand these outlets. I mean, how are they coming up with these numbers? Um, I think the first three: C.J. Stroud, uh, Bryce Young, Caleb Williams. That's a lot. I think those are the best quarterbacks um, in the country. But uh, so so then you got Keenan Slovis after Quinn Ewers. Keenan Slovis plus four thousand. Univers uh, Pitt for Pittsburgh University. Now, how are you putting him? And he's in a battle for his job. 
No, I'm not hating on him either. He's in a battle for his job. How are you just going to place the man in Heisman favor? They placed him in Heisman favors when, they were, when he was at USC. So how are you placing him in Heisman favor already? And, and he, he's in a battle for his job. I told you he threw a pick uh, in a spring game. I watched it again yesterday. It was on ESPN. I just happened to watch it. Or the ACC Network, whatever that was. And I just seen it. I mean, he threw a pick. But listen. So you got Keenan Slovis. You guys tell me in the comment section. Do you think this list is accurate? Then the last one you got is Dylan Gabriel plus 4,000 um, University of Oklahoma. Now, I'm going to be honest with you about this. As much grief as Oklahoma fans give me and as much as we go back and forth, I'm not putting Dylan Gabriel at the, four, uh, at the, uh, the last quarterback on this list as a Heisman favorite. I'm putting him right behind Caleb Williams. I'm put, I'm just gonna, for me, in my opinion, I'm going to put C.J. Stroud. I'm going to put Bryce Young. I'm going to put Caleb Williams. And then I'm going to put Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel has proven his work. Dylan Gabriel was at UCF and balled out. And you telling me that Quentin Ewers, Tyler Van Dyke, Clemson quarterback DJ, Keenan Slovis, Jackson Dart are all better than Dylan Gabriel? If you don't get out of here with that foolishness, that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen in my life. So get Dylan Gabriel out of all of these guys is at the very bottom of this list. I'm not feeling that. I mean, hey, I put him way up there. He's, he's mobile, he can throw the ball, and I like him. So tell me about this list, man. You guys like, share, subscribe. It's USCJ32 on Instagram. We have no update. Um, we're still waiting. And yeah, 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 and I think we did mention, I think we mentioned it yesterday, um, Offensive lineman from uh, Bama went in the portal. He was a he was a five star, four or five star, I believe, and uh, he was actually a guy that went to IMG Academy. Look, I hope we can get him. He's a, he he will be a good get if we can get him. Transfer portal guy, Alabama, and we still waiting on Jordan Addison. We still waiting on something. We still got some good guys. We we got some real quality players in the portal, and uh, I, I think I think it'll be um, a good get. So listen, like, share, subscribe. USCJ, small update, nothing, nothing uh, in particular as it relates to Jordan Addison, but it is an update as it relates to uh, these Pac-12 and the SEC uh, commissioners coming together. Man, listen, Jordan Addison better hurry up because once they come together, it's going to be, man, it, it's going to be over. You're not going to be able to sign those deals. They're trying to put a limit on these deals to where you can't get it. And so it, it, I hope he's not trying to be just, just super, super like, trying to see what the best deal is because you got an offer from somebody like USC or whoever, Texas, whatever the case may be, sign your deal, bro. Go get your money. You might get hurt. You never know. Don't wait on these guys because the commissioner, the Pac-12 commissioner, I just, I don't even know what to say about him. I mean, I, I don't even know. But listen, like, share, subscribe, USCJ32 on Instagram. Listen, I need you guys keep throwing up that deuce. Th throwing up that deuce. Fight on.